Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to make just a brief, a brief, brief intervention on this motion that is before us. Mr. Speaker, I would, I would like to, to reference my contribution um, on the basis of the standing orders, the book that was given to us um, even during the time when uh, I entered the Senate. And of course, there was a school of thought that indicated that this is not, this is not adequate. And there, there was a time when I believed that the standing orders was inadequate based on the behaviors that I witnessed in Parliament. But I've come to realize that there is a school of thought also that beyond a set of rules to govern behavior, there's what you call character. And I think when we speak of what transpires within this parliament, there's a lot that have to do with character. Because Mr. Speaker, as the member for Central Castro schools on the point that there are rules and laws governing every aspect of human interventions and behavior and, and leaving. In fact, our very body are governed by certain health laws. And when we do not subscribe to proper health laws, we pay for it. In fact, I can make reference to the scripture in Exodus 21, where if, uh, if two men were fighting, and Moses had a law that if one of them hit a pregnant woman and she had given birth prematurely, the husband could ask for whatever he wants from, the, the, from them and they must pay. There were laws in biblical times. And of course, the member for Grosley would agree with me that you can't participate in sports without adhering to laws. You couldn't play cricket without having the umpire to administer and even the square leg umpire. Of course, you may have some right to appeal to some decisions, but of course, there is a third umpire that will govern on that decision. There are, there are laws. What is troubling to me, Mr. Speaker, is that we expect sports people, the men on the field, to accept the red card when the referee issue a red card on the field and to walk out and be civilized about and understand the sports. We expect that even when a cricketer is actually placed out by the empire and he feels that he is treated unfairly. We expect him, we expect these sports people to behave well and subscribe to the rules of the games. But in the highest room of the land, in a parliament, because you are not totally happy, you can leash out insults. Mr. Speaker, I believe for some things that this is inadequate. Because there are quite a bit that is said below the mic that is not captured. And sometimes I'm asking myself, are you hearing? But persons would go out into the media and give a different look of to how things are. So for example, the member from Mikud South could say to me under the mic that if he sees me in a church, he will run but he goes to the media and cry. <laughs> but he doesn't know how my children cried when I shared with them what he said. This is about character. This doesn't answer everything. You see, if we do not embark on the right conversation, if we do not lace a discussion it doesn't matter our gains in GDP and other fiscal indicators showing well, we will not go very far, Mr. Speaker. And I believe that the public expects us to conduct ourselves and to have a conversation that ties in with the progress that we are making in other aspects of our development. Mr. Speaker, I've heard the term non-entity. And it hit me to the core because it was a, the person who was referred to as a non-entity is a daughter of a recognized business person. 
But what about this son of an employee of Castro City Council, my father, and a mother, a domestic worker, who sold coals, and who I had to carry people's laundry on my head to my home to wash. What am I? I'm below a non-entity. If this person was a non-entity, Mr. Speaker, recently there, I heard persons referred to as Sousses. Sousses, voters. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, as it relates to these terms, Sousses, you know, one word, um, also tell people, look your mother man, no mama, that was used by politicians. <laughs> A cabinet of criminals, jackass, mendicant, and even implied that some single mothers are really giving birth to criminals. These things have been allowed and sometimes we laugh. But there is character associated with this thing. And I take personal, especially personally when I heard the term Susa being used. Why? Our people did not invent politics as it is today. We were given this system to govern. And we participate in it. We vote. Some people choose to change where they vote for one reason or the other. But here's a politician who was given three terms. He has secured what I call social insurance because he's now get, he'll get a pension for the rest of his life. He has received gratuities or whatever it is. Well, the, 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 the one who called the person to say had three. Right? Three terms. He has a pension for life. The people who voted for him to give him three terms had nothing. But as they tried to get free five edges applied from a, from, a pal, from a pal rep who is now in power, they are called Suces. People, have, people do not owe me a vote. People have a right to vote where they want to. This character thing is about, it's very important in the discussion of development, Mr. Speaker. And I believe, Mr. Speaker, that the hypocrisy associated with representation must come to naught. Our year must be year and our name must be nay. You cannot cry and say you're concerned about the people. You cannot issue pleasantries of accept my sympathy to me, but below the mic, you're gonna tell me that if you see me in a church, you're going to run. And you know it's hurtful. You will not say it in the mic. You will not say it in the media. But then you will march today about democracy. Mr. Speaker, I've come to realize and appreciate that even my grief and my sadness is more comforting than pleasantries from hypocrites. And some people ask me why I'm sad. Because it provides more comfort than some persons who offer pleasantries in public. Mr. Speaker, when I lost the election in 2016, I was happier than when I won this time because the situation was different. I am blessed even today that the prime minister and leader of opposition then placed me in the Senate. With 3,169 votes I lost, I had a spirit, my head was up high. I felt I was a champion. And a, to add it, he made me leader in the Senate. What more? I was the happiest person. This time, I won, I got more votes. But I suffered based on what transpired, and everybody knew what happened during this election. You lost remember, everything. I, remember, I share your grief, but there is a motion before you, right? Yes, I'm speaking to this motion, I'm coming to it. And this is why I'm making the point, Mr. Speaker. As you go through this, in this very house, while you are grieving, the member from Mikud, under the mic, the last time the prime minister had to tell him, 
That you telling the man? That you telling the man? I never responded because I vow very early after I was made a senator and the prime minister agreed with me, I said to the, to the other younger parliamentarians, when we come in this house, let us not do like what the former parliamentarians going after senior politicians like the member for Mikul South, I'm um, for Viewford South. Leave these individuals, this, the former the prime minister, to other prime ministers. I was expecting to come in the house and to, 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 to benefit from the exchanges between four prime ministers in this parliament. Not that of former prime minister without I have never said nothing to him under the mic attacking me. But the standing orders allow him to do that. So is this inadequate? Shouldn't the standing orders have persons not call, say introducing a politician as me no mama? Shouldn't the standing orders deal with call um, deal with calling people suse voters, sons and daughters? Shouldn't the standing orders deal with calling referring to somebody as a non-entity? But I'll say this, Mr. Speaker, as I take my seat. I've said to persons who have served, even last week, a young lady I, I approved eight sheets of plywood to, a single mother of four. And Mr. Speaker, I had, a, I had to take the courage and say to you, when you walk through the streets of Castries as you leave my office waterfront, I want you to keep your head up high. Because there are some people who have a lot more than you, but they had a different start than we had. And I said to her, because I remember the term non-entity, I know where I come from. And I said to her, this is from taxpayers. This is from the government of Central Lucia. This is not from my pocket. Leave here and feel good. And any one of them you meet in the street of Castries that are that, that of a certain complexion or that have money or their own businesses, make sure you don't bow, keep your head up high and walk well. And I told Nashi that, yes, um, on, on, on last week. I had to tell her that because I feel that in this parliament, the same subtle attitude that we, some of us ought not to be here, some of us do not belong here, I experience it even in this parliament. It is not in the mic. You do not get it in the mic. It is subtle. And that deception goes into the media for the rest of St. Lucians. And the same people who parade the streets this morning are the ones who, that have been called suces. Because if any one of them come and receive eight sheets of plywood from me, the very people who want to lead them and represent them are being called suces. I do hope that, Mr. Speaker, as we continue in this parliament, that we will find the courage and will find the where we fall to even look at our standing orders. I personally believe that I should not be referred to as a criminal because the member for Mikut South have an issue with a land transaction. I personally believe that an apology is adequate and a withdrawal of that statement is adequate. For him to have gone to the courts and used the means of the court, again, I see the principle of, 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 of the lack of social justice as the court has taken a position. In real social justice, he stand high and to whom much is given, much is expected. And to ask of an apology is very little in that regard. And for the court to have suggested, I will abide by the principles of the court and I will be guided by the leader of government business. But I think the position of an apology or withdrawal of the statement is very little. Mr. Speaker, I've done wrong and I would stand any day and withdraw a statement made that's inappropriate. And I've seen other members of this side do it. And there are times it's not even called for. Even the Prime Minister, who sits above all of us, has sometimes says, if I'm wrong, I'm prepared to take it, in when he's making his contribution. That humility, that humility is being trampled on. That humility is not being appreciated on this side. As a matter of fact, what is happening is that the member from Mikud is using the situation by he being alone and he's compensating by doing insults and therefore it's easier to be accepted. So then it will appear that he's alone. So because he's one person, he's compensating by doing this to have his way. 
This is what is at, at stake at this point in time. The member is not serious about being in the parliament. The member is not serious about anything because if he was that serious, he would not just send me flowers and then come and laugh at my hurt in parliament under the mic. Or, 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 or send pleasantries. That's hurtful. That is hurtful. 